Ben Turney, CEO, Cavango Resources. We are a specialist metals exploration company with 14,500 square kilometres of prime ground in Botswana, covering three main project areas, looking primarily for nickel and copper, and in our third project, uh, IOCG-style mineralisation. We're now fully funded, having recently raised £3.5 million, and over the course of the last year, we've made significant improvements to our business as we're looking to push forward and try to make discoveries as we move into 2023. Ben, good to see you again. I haven't seen you since last July. Long, long time no see. Um, you've had a pretty tough 18 months, haven't you? One way or another, it's been a lot of work. Um, obviously, I wouldn't say it's tough. It's been a very productive 18 months, Matt. We've made a lot of progress in the company since we last spoke. The last time, um, obviously, we, we talked, it was just as we were getting into our KSZ drill campaign, the, the proof of concept campaign. We successfully completed that in February. We drilled 3,300 metres into the KSZ, and it's the most successful campaign that's ever been conducted in that region. So for a small company like Cavango to have pulled off such a really massive technical achievement like that, we've really really punched well above our weight. And the results that came in are very exciting. Market hasn't recognised that. So, of course, if you look at us purely from a share price perspective, like everybody else, yes, of course, we're down. But in terms of what we've actually achieved in the field and we've been able to demonstrate, uh, we have really, really pushed that project in particular forward. We then immediately followed up uh, with a drill campaign at our Ditau project. We took the rig from the KSZ immediately to Ditau, again, representing or reflecting just quite how aggressive we are now pursuing our programmes in the field. You know, we really kept that momentum. We successfully drilled 1,600 metres down at Ditau, and we're the first company now to have confirmed IOCG-style mineralisation in Botswana. That's a really exciting de um, development for us because this IOCG-style mineralisation, we know that it occurs on the edge of of, on these cratonic edges, which is where the western edge of Botswana sits. So for us as the first company to have identified this mineralisation, it gives us a really tantalising lead for the future. And of course, as we've moved into the second half of the year, our focus has been much more on the Kalahari Copper Belt, where we feel most confident about making successes um, and making discoveries. Uh, we've, de we've deployed a new technology, this controlled source audio magneto tellurics. We're the first company to use this CSAMT in the KCB in the way that we have. And that's attracted some pretty significant interest from some, from some very large firms in the region. We're now drill testing this and the results that we're seeing so far, it's all looking very, ex very exciting. In the background, there's all the progress that we've made in terms of strengthening our team. We've really overhauled the company from the very top to the very bottom. And I've got to say, we are in great shape now for next year. And on top of all of that, we've just raised three and a half million pounds. This is at a time when the market is absolutely starved of liquidity. And Cavango has managed to pull off what I believe is actually one of the best financing packages in the entire sector anywhere in the world. Now, I know that that is quite a bold claim and you'll probably try to put, pick me up on that. But for a pre-discovery company, which we are, we've now got major backing behind us, including investors with not only deep pockets, a lot of appetite and desire to support us as we move forward. So I'd actually say as, as hard work as, it been, as it's been, and it really has, we've achieved a hell of a lot since we last spoke. Well, it sounds, sounds like. Um, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the... Oh, crap, I'm not quite sure where to start. There was a, there was a, there was a lot thrown at me there. You're, you're judged by your share price. So you're at 5.45 last time we spoke, at 180-ish to, today. It's come off a lot, right? And I, I expect people getting ahead of themselves because of the copper price at the end of last year. But you've now got to start delivering. I think when I came away from the conversation last time, I, I felt overwhelmed by the amount that you were trying to do. You've raised that little bit of money. What was the, the total? Three and a half million, something like three that? Three and a half million, yeah, in sterling. Three, 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 three and a half million, million, right? So yeah. it's now incumbent on you to deliver a, a plan which you can articulate that you can deliver efficiently and will kind of give the company what it what it needs. And that is, you know, telling people exactly what you are. Are you a, a copper company, a nickel company, a PGE company? You know, you've also got Detail going on in the background. So what, what are you focused on? Yeah, it's a really excellent question. And this is like one of the things that we need to do over the next month is articulate sort of what the strategy is as we move forward. Ultimately, we are in this business to make commercial discoveries. I mean, that's, that is really the be all and the end all. And we will ultimately be judged by our share price. So yes, of course, at the moment, you know, we, we are on the ropes a little bit purely from that perspective. Our strategy moving forward is going to be very, very clear. We've 
um, announced recently an extensive drill program. So we've identified the equivalent of about 37,000 metres worth of, 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 of drilling that we can do in the KCB based on the extensive targeting work that we've done in the past. Now, of course, the money that we have won't take us through that full 37,000 metres. We expect to do probably in the region of about 10 to 15 in the current phase of exploration. So our focus is very much in the near term on making a discovery in the KCB. In the KSZ, which is a much more um, technically challenging project, we've now had significant both vindication and validation of our exploration methods, both from the drill results that we got from the campaign that we completed in February, but also from the work that Richard Hornsey has done on our behalf. So Richard has given us some really clear um, steers on how we can enhance the KSZ exploration program. And what we're particularly excited about is that we have, as you'll remember, the strategic hold over this massive project. I mean, it really is a project for the majors. But what we are is we're the first company to deploy the TDEM and CSAMT technology together in the entire region. So our focus in the KSZ is on rolling out the technology in the near term because we get much more bang for our buck from an exploration perspective. We want to see what's out there in terms of trill targets. While in parallel to this, we also have a JV process that's running at the moment that's been run for us by a company called Tamasis. They're a specialist mining investment company. We engaged them three months ago. And Tamasis are currently engaging with a number of large uh, J potential JV partners who are currently working through our data room. And my hope is that we'll be able to bring in a deal for that in the new year so we can really accelerate that project and take that forward. Meanwhile, down at Detail, we've met all of our spending commitments on the current license period as a result, obviously, of the recent drilling. There's more surface work that we can do, again, using this technology that we have. One of the bottlenecks, of course, is the availability of the technology. We've got one CSAMT receiver. We're in the process of securing a second at the moment, and we have two sets of equi uh, TDEM equipment available to us through our partner spectral geophysics. So there is a bit of a bottleneck there and that's primarily being deployed in the KCB and the KSZ. If we have the time next year, then we will look to do more work down at Ditto, but at Ditto, but again from, from the surface before we commit to more drilling. So for the time being, the message is really drill, drill, drill in the KCB, really look to make a discovery deploy the modern technology across the KSZ, see what we can identify in terms of uh, priority drill targets. And at Ditto, if we have the, re the resources and, the, and the, the, the time available to us, again, more survey work there, again, with a view to doing more drilling. Okay, so JVs I like, because you're showing you're using someone else's balance sheet and kind of sh sharing the load as it, as it were, whilst retaining some, some value for your shareholders. Uh, new technologies, a little bit more onshore. So CSAMT, Controlled Source Audio Magnetological Surveys. Uh, what is it? How do we know it works? And what do you think it's going to do for you? So if you're familiar with oil and gas exploration, there's a type of technology called 3D seismic. Now, 3D seismic doesn't give you a very large footprint when it's actually deployed. And it's also extremely expensive to gather. That's why the, that's why the oil and gas industry has it available to them. For metals exploration companies, that's really sort of outside of our gift normally, because we just simply don't get the footprint or the bang for our buck with our exploration dollars. CSAMT is a different type of technology, so it works in a different way to 3D seismic. But with some of the innovations that Kavango has made, both in terms of our actual data acquisition, so how we capture the data from the field, how we've configured the sensors, how we actually go about acquiring the data, how we then process that data and how we interpret it. We're now creating down to a depth of about four kilometers, these incredibly um, detailed, highly defined slices, vertical slices of the stratigraphy of how the individual rock layers actually might look. Now that doesn't give us any indication specifically about mineralization. There are other tests that we use. So for example, the TDEM technology looks for conductors. Obviously, if you think what a metal ore body is, it's essentially one of nature's most conductive large-scale conductive bodies. That's what we're looking for with the TDEM. The CSAMT enables us from surface, we believe, to look at structure. Now, if you think about how influential uh, controlling geological structures are on mineralization, effectively what this will help us do is enable us to do, I should say, is to find trap zones where mineralization could occur. 
In the KCB in particular, that's really important because you have this one main regional controlling formation, what's called the Dakar Formation, sitting on top of the Nguaco Pan. Now, if we believe we've managed to put together a technology that can help us identify that contact point, that's not only a huge competitive edge for us in terms of our current exploration licenses, but it potentially opens up the entire copper belt as well. So it really is very, very exciting. We've run into quite a bit of scepticism about what we've achieved so far, but so far in terms of what we're looking at from the drill cores that are coming up on the current hole, it's looking very, very exciting. I can't wait to provide more updates on that in the near future. Okay, so what, what updates have you provided so far? Because the, the question I asked was, so how do we know it works? Because it's, it's a new technology, and I appreciate the kind of 3D seismic on the oil and gas, but you, what do you do, recalibrate it to hunt for a copper? I mean, how does it work? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a very different technology to the 3D seismic. It basically, what you're looking for are rock layers. But the simple answer to that question is, how do we know if it works? We test it with the drill bit. It's really that simple. And that's what we are now doing on License 082. So we will be putting results out, certainly this side of Christmas, to explain what we've done and what the next steps are. But as with all of these, um, these geophysical surveying techniques, ultimately you have to get the truth detector out. It's the truth detector that will tell you what's actually subsurface, what is under the ground. And that's really what we are now doing. We are doing a major test on our use of this CSAMT technology to see what it actually means in the Kalahari Copper Belt. Okay, and then um, the, to the question that I really care about, and I, think, I suspect that most of your shareholders will, will care about as well, you've got to raise some money at quite depressed prices. So the only counter to that kind of dilution is say, well, look at the value it can, unre it can release. So 2023, how do you allocate that capital and why is that the best use of that capital? So as I started to explain earlier, um, sort of in terms of the overall plan, if we look in that in a bit more detail, um, the drill program in the KCB, that's going to be our main capital commitment in the first half of next year. Um, that's obviously going to be the most the big ticket item. And what's really important for us is that we obviously maximise our chances of success by using the technology available to us to go for the areas where we believe are the highest chances of mineralisation. So that's pretty straightforward. Meanwhile, in parallel to that, now that we've got the funds available How to us... How much do you allocate to that? I'll, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt, friend, but it's, it's really kind of important because, you know, I think you've taken a better stick for you know the, the last 12 eight, eight, 18 months and some, some, some of the um well the way things have gone right and i want people to kind of understand the plan and i want to start i want i want people to understand or you to communicate that you're in you've got a plan and you're in control of that as best as, best as one can be in this, these sorts of markets so how much money how much drilling how does that whole data drilling um arbitrage work in terms of that decision making and and, and 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 how often do you kind of review that decision making through well how often will you be um reviewing that data as you go through the year so the straight the simple answer is we're currently working on the basis of a 1.2 million pound drill budget in the kcb which is a combination of rc drilling and um and diamond core drilling in terms of actually sticking to that and is that the number we will definitely deploy of course that depends on results in the field so we're reviewing this obviously constantly we've got the current part of the campaign that will finish on the 16th of december botswana then closes down for a month it's their equivalent obviously of the summer holidays as you have in the southern hemisphere so that then gives us about four weeks to revisit all the data that we've gathered so far and firm up our plans for the start of next year. We've actually got a budget call set for the second week in January where we're going to confirm our six-month budget. Now, we've recently released the prospectus. The prospectus did actually say we would put 400,000 into drilling, but that was for really sort of a regulatory number. That was a, That's a definite commitment of how much we will certainly spend because it's in the prospectus. But I actually think we will treble that budget based on how much money we now have available to us. And as I say, that will be somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 15,000 metres. It will all depend on the combination of how much RC we do and how much diamond we do. As a rule of thumb, diamond is about three times as expensive as RC. So, so that, that's sort of one of the variables we'll need to factor into the plan as we go along. Okay. And you, you, said, you made a big claim in the beginning. Okay, this is probably the, 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 the best raise. I'm not quite sure what your words were, but you seem quite pleased with the, the way that you raised this uh, capital. Why is that? Is it because of who, because of who came in or the actual the, the cost of the capital? 
Um, it's, it's obviously it's a case of who came in. Um, we've worked extremely hard over the last year. Um, I've given dozens and dozens and dozens, quite literally, of presentations over the course of the last 12 months. I, I've pitched to pretty much anybody who would listen. And as a result of that, we were able to bring in two major strategic investors. I also brought in some other investors from some of the other presentations that I had done. None of those are notifiable, but we got some, some pretty chunky tickets that came through. So of the three and a half million that was raised, we did just over two and a half million of that ourselves directly directly from, from basically the efforts we put in over the last 12 months. The rest came in through our broker First Equity, who've been you know, incredibly supportive of us as well. So it was extremely, we were extremely pleased, obviously, with how it all came together. You know, it was the culmination of a lot of effort that went in beforehand. But what I'm particularly pleased about is if I look around the world at what's happening for a lot of companies in our sector, um, I've recently completed quite a detailed analysis on the Bloomberg terminal, looking at 90 base metal exploration companies with sub 30 million pound market caps and across Australia, Canada, UK, these companies are now running on fumes, fumes Matt, as we know. Um, if you look at the AIM statistics as well, you know, in London, we're looking at the worst year since 2003 for capital raises. It really is that bad out there. And I think a lot of investors don't necessarily see those numbers or get that sort of insight. So I'm obviously extremely happy that at this stage of the market, we are as well financed as we are, because look at the metal prices. And I keep on saying this on social media, there is a tidal wave of money coming in our direction. Um, it's a pretty much inevitable. Copper up at $4 a pound, give or take. The nickel price consistently above $26,000 a tonne. Um, the actual overall macro outlook is amazing. I think we're in for some difficult times as a sector before then while we overcome this liquidity crunch. But once we're through that, I think companies like Cavango are going to fly. And because of the way that we run our business, how aggressively we've pursued our exploration programs, we've drilled all three of our projects this year. Matt. So for you know the negativity that's out there and some of the commentary I read online, which is is nonsense, frankly. There isn't another company in London that's hit its projects as hard as we have over the last 12 months. And now we've got even more money available to us. So just imagine what we're going to do next year. And as soon as we do make that first discovery, and I'm confident that we will, I do believe in the ground that we've got. I believe in the team that we have and the partners that we work with. The one missing ingredient was the finance. So now that you know we now have that for the business, it's really, really exciting to be involved in Kavango. Uh, I was going to ask you what, what's your message to shareholders, but I think you've just answered it. Um, ben, wrap it up there. I uh, appreciate the update. Uh, we need to see way more of you, way more regularly. Um, so do come on again, please. I'd appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.